Good morning. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first is from Philippians 3, 10 through 14, and the second is from Acts 1, 1 through 8. Let us listen for the word of God. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death so that I may perhaps reach the goal of resurrection of the dead. It's not that I have already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me, and I reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. From Acts. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, This is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we all say, thanks be to God. When, when I uh, moved back here uh, a little over a year ago, uh, the leadership team asked me if I would just help them help you all get back on your feet. Amen? And, uh, but then back in May, in our leadership team meeting, um, the leaders of our church family said, Hammett, we're back on our feet, and we're ready to go. Amen? Are y'all ready to go? All right. That's what this uh, worship series is all about. It's all about not just being on our feet, but starting to move in the direction in which God wants to lead us. And um, now our, our church family is somewhere around 160 years old. Somewhere around 160 years old. We are like the old guy that is so old that he forgot when his birthday is. Okay? We don't know exactly when our church when our church began. And many churches our age have come and gone, but our church has stood the test of time. And, and sometimes I get asked, well, how has Bryant been able to do what it's done? Because there are lots of old churches in, in growing communities that die anyway. So how did Bryant do what, what we have done? Well, and I think it boils down to three things. First of all, we have had our heart set on Christ. We have had our heart set on Christ above all. Christ is the center of all that we do. We want to share his love with others and we want to build his kingdom here in Bryan. But second of all, our love for Christ compels us to love our neighbor as ourself. Bryant has always been growing. I've looked at the census data and you can follow it. Every 10 years there was growth from the very beginning of Bryant until today. And it has just gone exponential. It just keeps on growing and growing faster and faster and faster. Third of all, and finally, we have always had a heart for children and youth. We have always had a heart for children. That was Amy Solomon. Uh, we have always had a heart for children 
and youth. Um, we care for everybody, but we have always made them our top priority. And every time we have looked to see where God wants to lead us, we have begun with prayer. You know, we can't do what God wants us to do, and we can't go where God wants us to go if we don't ask God first and listen to what God says. So during this series, uh, Pete and Rebecca and I are writing the devotionals that are in your Traveler's Companion. And they go along with what, we're, what we will do in church on Sunday. And I want to encourage everybody to make that a part of your daily disciplines of prayer and Bible study. Would you pray with me? Lord, we pray now that you will give us your spirit. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to see the very real human needs in our community. And open our hands and our feet so that we may serve for you and in your name. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our friend, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We grow as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. I remember the first flashlight I ever got. My, uh, my aunt, gave my, one of my aunts, my, my dad's sister, gave my brother and me a flashlight for Christmas one year. And I remember she had, she had hand-painted my name on it with all these letters that had little dots on the ends and all of it. It was very cute for a, you know, 10-year-old boy. But um, not long after I got that flashlight, my dad took me on a father-son camp out uh, at Cove Creek Camp. We were, I was a Cub Scout at the time. <laughs> yeah, that really is me. <laughs> I did have hair at one time, but um, anyway, um, we, went, we went on a father-son camp out uh, with the Cub Scouts, and I remember one night late, after all of the activities were over, we were heading back to our tent, and I asked Dad, Dad was the one that always carried the flashlight, and I said, Dad, would you let me carry the flashlight for a while? And he said, well, sure, son, he handed it over to me, and then I did what I think probably most kids would do. I, I aimed that flashlight right at my feet, and I'm <laughs> walking like this. Now, you know what happens when you do that? You know, you start bumping into stuff, and you trip over every root. And my dad was 6'3", and he couldn't see anything. Uh, and so he says, son, son, aim that flashlight straight ahead so we can see where we're going. And I said, I said, all right. So I did exactly what my dad said. I went and aimed it. You could see every tree for 50 yards, from 50 yards away. But you couldn't see the path right in front of our feet. And so my dad says, son. We have to see the path. We have to be able to see the path. And I, I said, okay. He said, I aim it back at the ground. So I went right back where I had begun. <laughs> and I was surprised that he didn't snatch the flashlight right out of my hands. But he didn't. He, he paused. And he said, Hammett, if we're going to make it back to our tent, if we're going to make it where we're going, we're gonna have to, you're going to have to aim that flashlight somewhere between your feet and the trees. Aim it about six feet ahead of us, and we'll be able to see where we are going. Now, I think that in this story from, from the book of, of Acts, Jesus realizes that sometimes his church has a vision problem. Jesus understood that. In our scripture reading today, uh, this is after the resurrection. Jesus spent 40 days teaching, uh, teaching his disciples about what, what he wanted them to do. Uh, at the end of that 40 days, some church folks, some good church folks, came to him and they asked him when he was going to bring the kingdom. Now, that sounds like a good question, and, and it is, but what they meant by that was, Jesus, when are you going to fix all of our problems? You ever wondered, wondered that? When are you going to fix all of our problems? And by saying that, these good Christian church folks were looking just at their feet. Jesus said, that's none of your business. That's not what they wanted to hear. He said, that's none of your business. That's only for the Father to know. And then he said this, 
He said, I'm going to bring the kingdom. You can trust, the, trust me for that. But while you're waiting for me to do that, you have some work to do. Carry the gospel to the ends of the earth. And in that very moment, a cloud came and carried Jesus away into the sky. And the disciples there looked up into the sky and were staring into heaven where Jesus had gone. They were looking now at the trees. All of a sudden, two men in white appeared, and I always see Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. <laughs> that, is, that is some bad Photoshop, and I, I only say that because I did it. <laughs> but, um, anyway, let's go, let's go back to the other one, Anthony. Um, so these men in white appear, and they come, and they say to these good Christian folks, they say, why are you staring at the sky? Jesus will come back that way. Now get to work just like he said. Get your head out of the clouds. You see, Jesus and the men in white were telling the church that we need to focus somewhere between our feet and the trees. Jesus says, don't get stuck in your problems. Don't get stuck in your routine. But also, don't get your head stuck in the clouds either. I'm, I'm going to keep my promise to bring the kingdom once and for all. But in the meantime, listen to this. Jesus says, I'm going to build my kingdom through you. I'm going to build my kingdom through you. You see, Jesus says that the church exists to grow God's kingdom. And as Methodist Christians, we believe that growth is an essential part of the Christian life. God loves us before we know there is a God. God loves us even when we don't deserve it. And God keeps loving us until we love like Jesus himself. Are you there yet? I'm not. All of us still have some growing to do. And the same thing goes for the church. 